North Korea continues to claim there are zero cases of COVID-19 within its tightly sealed borders. But over the past weeks and months, the regime has shown signs that it might actually be grappling with the virus, enforcing stringent lockdowns and social distancing measures, issuing warnings to the public and receiving medical supplies from international organisations. So just how widespread is the virus in the regime and what does it have to gain by denying infection cases? To discuss this, we have today Dr. Bruce Bennett, Senior Defence Analyst at Rand Corporation, specialising in Northeast Asian military issues. It's great to see you again, sir. Thank you very much. We also have Kim Dongmin, a correspondent for NK News based in Seoul. How are you today, Tongmin? It's lovely to see you. Great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Right, well, I don't think any of us believe that there are zero infection cases in North Korea. But well, <laughs> let's start with you, Dr. Bennett. Does it seem to you that COVID-19 has been somewhat contained in North Korea or do you think the regime is actually more worried than they're letting on? Well, you look at them building this huge hospital in, Be in Pyongyang in order to deal with cases and you have to conclude that something's going on. There's been stories of them having cases since late January, early February um, and it doesn't go away once it starts hitting as Korea's found out, South Korea's found out. So uh, I think it's probably spread widely, especially in the border area with China. You just can't seal the border. And Ms. Kim, from your observation, how does the COVID-19 situation seem to be in the North? Do you think it's under control? It seems they're working hard to make it under control, but um, with their infrastructure for health facilities, it seems that it wasn't under control. And, and like Dr. Bennett mentioned, that probably was why Kim Jong-un came up with the idea of Pyongyang General Hospital. Um, until now, they have been uh, pursuing the rhetorics on state media that North Korea is a clean land and no confirmed COVID-19 cases. But what if um, it becomes a widespread pandemic like in other countries? I think Kim Jong-un had to come up with a, a plan B to handle any situation in which um, a mass amount of people will be infected. Um, it seems that's why they are probably looking forward to humanitarian aids from other um, international organizations. And it seems that maybe there are some sort of conversation going on between the North and the South, although South Korea does not admit um, for some humanitarian aid for such hospitals and COVID-19 measures. Uh, because recently a South Korean organization was granted sanctions exemption to send um, related items to the North. And Dr. Bennett, how serious do you think the situation actually might be in the North? And how susceptible would the North Korean people be to COVID-19? I mean, the North Korean military alone is already known to be critically malnourished and they lack proper amenities as well. Uh there are reports even in March that as many as 200 soldiers from the North Korean military up on the Chinese border had died of symptoms that look a lot like COVID-19. And, you know, how do you prove it? Uh, North Korea is certainly not going to want to say it was COVID-19. They'll want to claim it was pneumonia or something else. Uh, but if 200 soldiers died, roughly for that age young person, they're only getting about 0.2% fatalities. So let's say because of poor eating, because of poor health, they got 2%. That would mean there were 10,000 cases in the military. Uh, and that was in March. So uh, it's quite possible that it is fairly widespread, which is likely why Kim Jong-un was disappearing for three weeks at a time, four times so far this year. If it is that widespread, it would indeed be very concerning with North Korea's already uh, rampant humanitarian crisis. And well, Ms. Kim, how, how much worse would North Korea's humanitarian crisis get um, if this pandemic worsens? Well, until now, a lot of organizations, NGOs and intergovernmental organizations were sending assistance. And recently, uh, UNICEF was uh, granted sanctions exemption of uh, the medical equipment that deal with respiratory symptoms. This was actually a bit of a change um, in focus for these organizations to send medical aids. Usually when they come up with this list of exempted 
um, to, or to be exempted items, they usually are in touch with their North Korean counterparts first. It seems that um, because the humanitarian situation is not the prospect are not good when it comes to COVID-19, they are maybe shifting their focus from prevention and diagnosis and hygiene or disinfection to now um, the actual treatment of COVID-19. Well, Dr. Bennett, why do you think that the regime is denying it has COVID-19 patients within its borders? And, and so far, it's been rejecting offers of assistance from South Korea and the US. Why do you think it's been doing so? Well, Kim Jong-un is supposed to be the god of North Korea. Notice that he almost never wears a mask because, of course, gods don't get sick. They mm -hmm. don't contract disease. Uh, to contract disease suggests weakness. And so he doesn't want to appear to be weak himself or his people. He wants to claim that he has successfully protected his people from this disease by closing the borders and taking other actions when the people know that once the disease starts spreading in the country, it's going to be very hard to control it. And it probably has been hard, probably has been spreading. People have recognized that, uh, that he's been uh, disappearing and probably questioning exactly what's going on. So this is a matter of face. This is a matter of embarrassment to him because he's not accomplishing what a god should be able to to do and that undermines the the regime's authority and power then just how precarious uh, just how precarious do you think kim jong-un's position is right now in north korea dr bennett um i think there are reasons to believe that he's shaky on a variety of bases i mean go back to the hanoi summit before he went to hanoi he told his people he would definitely be getting sanctions relief that weakens him with all of the other failures. Sanctions appear to be taking hold, making it difficult to feed the people, some starvation occurring, if disease is spreading. Um, and of, of course, with all of his purges, all of the people he's killed, you know, if it were my cousins, my uncles that were being killed, uh, and I'm a member of the elite, I'm going to feel terrible and I'm not going to like him very much. So I think he's got a lot of reasons for worrying about his, his situation. Well, he's definitely not a god, particularly not a benevolent one, one that deserves an <laughs> opera song about him. Indeed. Well, well, Ms. Kim, just how bad do you think the North Korean economy has uh, gotten with the COVID-19 crisis striking um, its economy and its borders? Well, Dr. Bennett mentioned how Kim Jong-un is not a god, and it goes the same with economy situation as well. Um, as we know, a very big anniversary event is coming up. It's October 10th, um, 75th anniversary of the founding of the Workers' Party of Korea. It's one of the biggest anniversaries in the, in the country, and there are multiple projects that were initially planned to meet that deadline. And if you remember, um, the Wonsan Kalma Torres Zone project, it was supposed to be uh, finished by the Day of the Sun, April 15th. And you know what? Kim Jong-un didn't appear. Um, and then after that, probably Kim Jong-un has a lot of pressure on him to come uh, to actually accomplish the promises that he made when it comes to the economic front and the borders close the items, although the medical item uh, aid items are, are given priorities um, for those amount of construction projects such as the Pyongyang General Hospital. Um, it will be in Samjian city construction as well. It will be a very uh, difficult situation for um, both Kim Jong-un and all the um, officials that are in charge of it. And recently, uh, Choi Dong-hye visited, uh, the official visited Kaesong, and um, other officials also visited Pyongyang General Hospital. It seems that all North Korean officials are very hard at work to prove that um, improvements are ongoing. But at Pyongyang General Hospital, officials were scolded for not being able to come up with a uh, a good, good enough budget and not being able to um, supply enough materials for the construction. And they were also scolded for asking the people for um, the to, to supply the materials, which um, is sort of against the whole idea of 
providing this hospital for the people. So all in all, it seems that um, there's a very big pressure on Kim Jong-un's shoulder about the economy. And Dr. Bennett, what do you think about North Korea's claims that it's um, developing a vaccine for COVID-19? Well, we have to remember that North Korea has a very backward medical system with some key exceptions. Whatever is important for the regime tends to get taken care of. And so if we go historically, North Korea has made uh, vaccines, biological weapons, a very key asset. Uh, North Korea had a vaccine for the Korean hemorrhagic fever, a cousin of Ebola, uh, back in 1989, had already vaccinated tens of thousands of people. So when it's important, when it's critical, the key resources can be put on it. It's just North Korea doesn't have the resources to go more broadly and take care of the needs of all the people. For Kim, for his family, for some of the immediate senior elites, they can take care of that, just not a lot beyond it, and they can develop some key things. Now, we can't expect that they have the kind of technology that the U.S. has, hard to import that with the sanctions. But they've got some apparently very good physicians who may be developing a vaccine. It will be interesting to see what they come up with. And Ms. Kim, uh, what has the regime's state media been reporting about the virus, especially with the North Korean defector who came to the South having returned to the North? That was the biggest story last week, right? The North Korean state media um, reported over the weekend, uh, last weekend, that a defector who, a runaway, a quote-unquote runaway, um, that he came back to North Korea on July 19th and was found in Kaesong City. And it sort of matches with what South Korean military has been telling its people. Um, from South Korean point of view, this person left South Korea on July 18th through Kangwado and swam across the Han River approximately five kilometers, it seems, um, to reach the Kaepung County. Um, North Korean state media um, was very, very, uh, it focused a lot on how this could be a, uh, it could be a risk for Kaesong City and North Korea in general. Kim Jong-un took preemptive measure to lock a uh, to order a lockdown of the city of Kaesong and a lot of um, goods for quarantine and testing, um, it all went to Kaesong city accordingly. After the Kaesong city uh, incident, um, North Korean state media has been um, dedicating a lot of full pages for um, to report on the domestic quarantine measures. And KCTV, North Korean um, television, has been also showing the quarantine videos again. It has stopped for a while, but it started showing the footage of North Korean officials or workers um, disinfecting the public places and so on and so forth. So it seems that all in all, North Korean state media um, is showing how much a maximum emergency and national emergency, um, the potential COVID carrier, the redefector, is and how much they are taking care of it. It didn't say that the defector is a confirmed COVID case and WHO wouldn't confirm that with me. But um, yeah, they refer to him as a suspected carrier of malicious virus. Well, it looks like they're looking for someone's blame and it seems to have come at a good time exactly. with the re-defection um, case. And on that note, Dr. Bennett, some people say that the North has also benefited from the COVID-19. I mean, it's given it the opportunity to strengthen its ties with China, for instance, and also take advantage of America's relatively weaker position as America also struggles to handle the pandemic. Would you agree with this point of view? Do you think the North is actually going to use the pandemic to its advantage? Oh, the North uses everything possible to its advantage. That is the character of the North Korean society. It is a very weak country in many ways. I mean, it, in, in real reality, we might refer to it as a fourth world country in many ways. But it also has some higher tech aspects. Um, and it's going to, every time it gets a chance, take advantage and try to exploit weaknesses they see outside. Um, that's the kind of thing that we need to be careful about because North Korea is always going to hype their accomplishments as glorious and wonderful. 
and they're going to downplay accomplishments in the South. Um, we don't do a very good job of countering their information campaigns, their psychological operations. Uh, but that's an area where we need to pay more attention so that people understand how often they are really being deceptive and trying to sell the importance of North Korea when in reality it's not a very capable country. Well, I'm afraid this is where we're going to have to wrap up the discussion today. That was Dr. Bruce Bennett, a senior, senior defense analyst at RAND Corporation, specializing in Northeast Asian military issues. And Kim Dongmin, a correspondent here for NK News based here in Seoul. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. And to our viewers, thank you for watching.